coming with a pre-delivery check on that new car, Mitch. Oh, I'm all done with it, Van. I buttoned it up about five minutes ago. I was just looking over this new transmission. It's like the one I saw you checking out on that car. I was trying to figure out all that's new. All that's new? Huh. I'm disappointed. Don't stand there and tell me that Mitch doesn't have the story on the new three-speed automatic transmission. I'm afraid that's true, Tech. I apologize. I knew that Mitch would be going to the special classes that are going to be held on this transmission. Well, one thing led to another. I just kept putting off telling him what I know. But, Van, you know how popular those classes are going to be. There's no telling when Mitch can be worked into one of the schools. What's he going to do in the meantime? You're right, as usual, Tech. I guess we'd better give Mitch a preview of what's new, as long as we've got a car equipped with a new transmission. Well, I noticed a couple of things already, Van. This transmission's bigger. And while the controls are in the same general location, they're different. Right, Mitch. The controls have been simplified. The accelerator pedal linkage, for instance, is new and simpler in design. And this cable adapter housing on the side of the case makes it easier to adjust the control cable. Say, speaking of controls, why not take Mitch for a ride in the car and let him see for himself how the driver can control the transmission to give him the performance he wants? Good idea, Tech. Let's lower the car, climb aboard, and go out for a spin. Now that end button is neutral, Mitch, like before. R is for reverse, and D is for drive. I see, Van. What's new with the operation when the D button is pushed in? The outstanding feature, of course, is that this transmission has three forward speeds in the D range. You start in breakaway and upshift from breakaway to second, between 10 and 40 miles an hour, depending on throttle opening. As you drive on, you should get an upshift from second to direct drive anywhere between 15 and 75 miles an hour, again, depending on throttle opening. Yeah, Mitch. And when you lift that canal boat you call your foot off the accelerator, you should get a normal downshift from direct drive to breakaway at about eight miles an hour, like when you're slowing down to a stop. Right. And in direct drive, if you're going between 25 and 70 miles an hour and suddenly want to pass, push the accelerator all the way to the floor. That gives you a forced downshift from direct to second. Pretty clear, fellas. But I got a question. What are those number one and number two buttons for? Something special? Yeah, Mitch, you've got the advantages of three speed ranges with this new transmission. Instead of an L button, like on the power flight, there's a number one button for low range or first gear. You'd use it when climbing mountains or when going down very steep grades and you want to use the braking effect of the engine. That number one button is also the one to use when you want to pull out of mud or sand because the transmission won't upshift to a higher range. I get it. Now, how about the number two button? The number two button is an intermediate speed range or second gear. It's also a good mountain gear. Going down long grades, you can use the braking effect of the engine. But even more important, it's wonderful for use in heavy city traffic when you may want quick acceleration to take advantage of a break in traffic. What's more, it won't upshift to direct unless you get up to 75 miles an hour. So you don't get so much upshifting and downshifting as you would with the D button engaged. I've noticed that this car sure has a lot of pickup, especially when getting away at the lights. Well, there's good reason for that, Mitch. When you start in drive, for instance, you start in breakaway speed with a transmission gear ratio of 2.45 to 1. Besides all that, you get a torque multiplication of 2.7 to 1 from the torque converter. If you multiply it out, that's a starting ratio of better than 6.6 to 1. Wow. No wonder there's a lot of get up and go. You can say that again, my boy. And that's one big reason why you should never stall test this new transmission. With all that torque, you'll have trouble holding the car. And it might get away from you. <laughs> yeah, Mitch. We don't want you knocking down any building walls. Okay, fellas. I know when I'm licked. I won't make any stall tests. But tell me, what's the gear ratio when the transmission upshifts to second speed? It's 1.45 to 1, Mitch. And when the unit shifts to direct drive, you're operating on a one-to-one -one ratio. Well, that clears up the ratios. But I'm still a little hazy on the shift pattern. Well, look, 
When the number one button is pushed in, the car won't upshift from breakaway to second speed or to direct drive. I told you that before. And when the number two button is pushed in, you start in breakaway, as usual. The upshift to second will take place between 10 and 40 miles an hour, depending on the throttle opening. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't drive over 60 or 65 miles an hour with the two button in. But if you should, the transmission will upshift from second to direct drive, but not until the car gets up to about 75 miles an hour. Uh-huh. Now it's beginning to dawn on me. Sure, Mitch. So you can see why that two button is excellent for heavy traffic. It provides a lot of flexibility and plenty of reserve power for acceleration when you want it. So as long as the two button is in and the car's speed stays above 75 miles an hour, the transmission will remain in direct drive. Right. Now, if you raised your foot off the accelerator so car speed dropped below 75 miles an hour, then the transmission would downshift and you'd be right back in second speed again. Okay. Now I've got it cleared up in my mind. There's just one more question. While driving with the number two button in, is there a kick down possible if you want more acceleration than you can get from the second gear? You bet there is. Tell him, Ben. Why, sure, Mitch. If the unit has upshifted and then you slam that accelerator pedal to the floor, you'll get a downshift to breakaway. Good. That's what I wanted to know. That certainly ought to give you all the acceleration you need. It sure will. And you better be sure you've got some clear space ahead before you tramp down on that pedal, because you'll be going places in a hurry. That I will, Tech. I'm beginning to have a lot of respect for what this transmission can do. You're going to have a lot more respect for it, Mitch. I'll head back to the shop now, and when we get there, I'd like to tell you about some of the new features that make the faster acceleration and super smooth shifting possible. Yeah, Van. And in the meantime, somebody better turn this record over. Then we'll go further into operation and servicing on this new transmission. Now that we're back, Van, are you still going to go into the features on the new transmission? Like where it gets all the extra pickup? Right, Mitch. One big source of extra power, of course, is the torque converter. In this unit, the converter works over a wider range of speeds and provides greater torque multiplication over a longer period of time. Besides this, the new transmission has two planetary gear sets, like the power flight. But instead of one multiple disc clutch, this new unit has two. Two clutches, eh? <laughs> it really delivers in the clutch. And that's not all, my boy. This new baby has an overrunning clutch. That's another new feature. An overrunning clutch? What's it supposed to do? It improves the shifting quality, Mitch. Didn't you notice how smoothly upshifts and downshifts were made? Say, that's right. When we went from breakaway to second, and down from direct to breakaway, I could hardly tell a shift took place. Well, you can chalk up the credit for smoother shifting to the overrunning clutch. When torque is applied, on breakaway, for example, the overrunning clutch locks up to keep the low and reverse planet carrier from turning. When torque is not applied, the clutch overruns and helps smooth out the downshift. But you'll get details on this when you attend the special training classes on this transmission. Okay, Van. But I was wondering, is there anything special on maintenance or servicing? Does the unit use the same kind of fluid? Yep. Automatic transmission fluid type A. Just keep it up to the proper level. In other words, then, I check the level every thousand miles, the unit in neutral, and while the engine is idling. The level should be at the full mark if the car is warm, or at the low mark if the car is cold. Right. Any more questions? Yeah. Suppose our road test on this pre-delivery check showed the transmission wasn't operating quite right. What would you check first? Well, why don't we go through a complete sequence of testing? That way we'll cover just about any possible condition. For example, we check fluid level first with the engine idling. Yeah, and that I know how to do. Fine. Next thing to check is the accelerator pedal angle. An accelerator set too high will cramp the driver's foot. If it's set too low, it won't travel far enough for wide open throttle operation or for kick down. So when the pedal is pressed to the floor for wide open throttle, make sure the underside of the pedal will touch the floor mat, but will not compress the mat. Touch, but not compress. Okay. 
You can get proper pedal angle by making the accelerator shaft rod longer or shorter. Just remove the cotter key and slip the rod out of the bracket lever. Loosen the lock nut and turn the rod. Oh, yeah. I see the threaded section of the rod at the ball joint end. Good eye there, Mitch. Now, the next point to check is the throttle linkage. Check it for binding or lost motion. Well, I can't feel any interference or excessive free play in this linkage. That's fine. The next thing to check, then, is engine idle speed. Yeah, Mitch, so start the engine. Hook up the tachometer, set idle at 475 to 500 RPM in neutral. Then stop the engine. Now, for proper operation of the throttle valve, make sure the linkage down to the transmission is right. How's that done? Why, you loosen the throttle linkage adjusting nut on this rod at the carburetor. Move the rod rearward to take out all the slack in the linkage. Hold the rod preloaded in that position and tighten the adjusting nut securely. This should be seven to nine foot-pounds. Start the engine and recheck idle speed. If it's still between 475 and 500 RPM, the linkage adjustment is okay. Good news, Van. Our linkage adjustment is okay on this car. That's enough on linkage adjustment, then. Now, if we can get tech to hold the R button all the way in, I'll raise the car and show you how to make the push button control cable adjustment. Hoist away, Van. I've got that R button all the way in. Good. We then remove the screw and washers holding the control cable adjusting clip to the transmission. Determine the total free play of the cable. Push the cable in the adapter one half of the total travel. Hold it there and engage the adjusting clip in the cable groove. Then install the screw and washer and tighten it up. Don't forget to check the cable adjustment. Yeah, Mitch, push the various buttons in and return to neutral each time. The engine should start only when the end button goes in. I see. And if it starts when any other button's pushed in, I'd have to recheck the adjustment. That's it in a nutshell, Mitch. Okay. What follows the cable adjustment check? A line and rear clutch pressure check, Mitch. And you test both pressures at the same time. Proper shifting depends on correct line, governor, and rear clutch pressures. So install a pair of 300-pound gauges at the line and rear clutch takeoff holes. Connect a tachometer and hang it under the car. Then with the rear wheels free to turn, start the engine. Hmm. Line pressure is okay. It's 90 pounds at all forward speeds at 800 RPM. Our rear clutch pressure is okay too. It's 15 pounds lower than line pressure, which is what it's supposed to be. Line pressure is 225 pounds in reverse at 1600 RPM. Rear clutch pressure, again, is 15 pounds lower. Yeah, it's 210. So both line and rear clutch pressures are okay. Right. Now, if line pressure was wrong, you'd check the regulator valve and the valve spring for sticking. If our rear clutch pressure was off, you'd check the front servo release pressure. It's made at this takeoff hole on the lower right side of the transmission. As a matter of fact, Mitch, you'll find everything you need on pressure checks all explained in the reference book. Well, I'll study that book, but good. That's the spirit, Mitch. Now, when it comes to checking the band adjustments, there's good news for you. Don't tell me the job's going to be easier. You guessed it, Mitch. It's a whole lot easier. You can adjust both the kick down and low reverse bands from the outside. You no longer need to drain oil and remove the pan to adjust the reverse band. The adjusting screws for both bands have lock nuts and are handled the same way. Here's the kick-down band adjusting screw on the left side. The low reverse band adjusting screw is on the right side. I'll adjust one band, the kick-down, and you'll know the same procedure applies to the other. Fire away, Van. I see what you're getting at. Okay, first you loosen the lock nut and back it off nine turns. Then, with your fingers, Turn the adjusting screw to see that it's free. Run it down finger tight. Next, use the inch-pound torque wrench to tighten the adjusting screw 70 to 75 inch-pounds. 
Now, mark the adjusting screw head and the transmission case. Then, back the screw out exactly two turns. With a small wrench, keep the screw from turning. Using a box wrench, tighten the lock nut securely. This should be about 35 to 40 foot-pounds. And that's the kick-down band adjustment. Pretty neat, Van. After adjusting both bands, then, I suppose you'd go ahead and road test the car to see if the condition was corrected. Right you are, Mitch. For further maintenance and adjustment tips on this new transmission, you can look them up in the reference book. Okay. You and Tech made it pretty clear. But well, I'll really give that book a good going over. Do that, Mitch. You'll not only make it easy on yourself, but you'll also get customer reception to this new unit off to a good start. And as you well know, how customers feel about our product and serviceability is mighty important to all of us.